You guys made it happen. Today we have a Kona Hanzo ESD to take a first look at. This bike is literally made possible because of you guys. I initially reached out to Kona when this was announced and said I'd love to review one. And they said, I don't really know, there's a shortage, it may be hard to get you one, I don't think it's gonna happen. But then enough of you stepped in and sent them emails telling them why you watch the channel, how much you appreciate my reviews, and how some of you even said you wouldn't buy this bike without seeing me review it first. And after you sent those, Kona sent me an email and said, we got a bike we'd like to send you for review. So you guys made it happen. Thank you so much, you guys are amazing. Okay, let's get into this. This is one of the most exciting bikes of the year. If you haven't already seen it, I made a video where I went over all of the stuff we knew about this online, but having it in person is a totally different experience. So today we're gonna look through all the things that I notice and see in person that I couldn't tell online. So here it is, this is the Kona Hanzo ESD. It's a steel hardtail. It's in the Hanzo family, but this one is super aggressive. It's very slack. You'll notice the top tube is super low. For the first time ever, I'm able to run a 175 mil dropper on a size medium. On an aggressive hardtail like this, the top tube, the big front triangle, doesn't really do anything. The only benefit that a big front triangle gives you is lots of space for bags for bikepacking or maybe a certain aesthetic. By lowering this and getting it out of the way, we can run a longer dropper, we can slam it, we can feel more like a BMX bike and a dirt jumper, it get out of the way and we can move around more. There's just no real reason to have a long seat tube or a super high top tube. And Kona knocked it out of the park with this super low seat tube. And I know a lot of you love when there's a straight line from the head tube to the back, and uh, this is pretty close to a straight line. So yeah, they've done some cool things, little, little tweaks over the old Hanzo. There's no seat tube gusset, which I appreciate. The seat tube isn't this high like it used to be. So the big news about this frame is the super slack head angle, the super long reach, and they still kept the short rear chain stays that go from 417 to 433, and it's a sliding dropout. You can run at single speed. You can adjust the chain stay for where you want. Of course, I slammed it all the way forward because I love a super short chain stay. We have a super long 465 mil reach on a size medium. That's what size this is. I'm 5'6". I have the torso of a 5'10 person and the legs of somebody 4'10". And so I'm all torso and no legs. So I like a longer reach, but I need that seat tube out of the way. This is the longest size medium I've ever demoed. It's gonna be interesting to see if it feels like a boat or if it feels comfortable. A lot of the times when you get a slacker head angle, the bars move back a little bit and so you actually need a little bit longer reach to compensate for that. I'm excited to see what it feels like. Up front, we have a 63 degree head angle. That is super slack. I only know of two or three other hardtails that are slacker than that. And I know some people think that slacker is always better. There's a point where it's not. And some people want slack bikes for the coolness factor or for the looks. I like slack bikes for the handling of them. They really perform different, especially on the steppy, ledgy, steep stuff that we have here. So I'm super excited to take this on our double black diamond trails here in Sedona. I think the slack head angle will give it tons of composure and it won't make me wanna go over the bars because that front end, that fork's just gonna be at the right angle to hit all of those little drops and steep sections. So Kona has done some really forward thinking things here that I am a huge fan of. First of all, they have an XT shifter with an SLX derailleur. That's usually opposite of how people do it. Most people will walk up to a bike, look at the derailleur, see what level it is, and then make assumptions about the rest of the parts on the bike. And so a lot of companies can get away with skimping out on the shifter, running a super low end shifter, because all people look at is the derailleur. Whoever designed this bike is obviously a rider and they built this to be a rider's bike. So we've got the XT shifter with the lower end derailleur, which is fine because most people can't tell the difference between XTR, XT, SLX, and Dior if they were blindfolded with the derailleur. With the shifter, you do feel it. And what's nice about XT is you get the double up shift on the trigger and the shifter just feels better on the XT shifter. So that's a great place to spend money to upgrade a bike. SLX derailleur is gonna be just fine on this. 
We've got race face affect R cranks in a 175 mil, which is surprising with how low the bottom bracket is on this. I thought we'd see 170 mil cranks. I'll let you know if that's a problem and I get pedal strikes or not. But um, yeah, that's pretty interesting to see the longer cranks being run on this bike. It will corner really well with those longer cranks. We've got the race face AR 30 wheels. This hub's really interesting. At the end of this video, I'll have a clip of the hub sounds. Kind of interesting. And they actually have pretty good engagement. I'm impressed for a stock hub. Shimano did a really good job with their hubs. So also up here, you'll notice this is kind of a flat bladed design. It looks like a leaf spring. It should be pretty stiff side to side, but allow a little bit of flex vertically. I love that it also comes with a travel adjust Transx dropper. Now, a lot of people are familiar with PNW droppers. Transx makes their droppers. So this is the same thing essentially as a PNW dropper. So despite Transx's low price point, they're good little droppers. And this is matched to Shimano's dropper lever. I hadn't seen that before, but it looks really nice. This bike has a fantastic spec on it. Personally, there's nothing I would change to go out and ride on it. Maybe the grips, maybe the saddle. And I changed out the pedals. Everything else, if you can't shred hard on this and have fun with it as is, something's wrong. Now granted, people like to tweak stuff and customize them and make them their own, and that's fine. But there's no weak part on this standing out that's gonna be like, ooh, that's pretty bad. We, I'm gonna wanna upgrade those first. In fact, they come with 3C Minion DHR2 with XO casings. Up front, we've got an Asagai in 3C as well, XO tire. That is an indication of how this bike is meant to be ridden. This thing has downhill tread tires on it, 150 mil fork, 63 degree head angle. This thing is a shredder. This is not meant for commuting on the street and occasionally hitting a flat trail in the Midwest. This thing is meant for steep, rowdy stuff. Up front, we've got a race face cockpit, 35 mil bars, nice short affect stem. We've got Shimano Dior four piston brakes, which look fantastic. This is a rider's bike. You can tell whoever spec this really rides. The parts they put on are the parts that make a difference. And the places they saved money are the places where you can save money. So like I said, running that better shifter, huge plus. Running a cheaper dropper that's still plenty reliable, huge plus. SLX hubs, just fine. I really like the Race Face AR30 wheels. They're soft, they're not weak, but they're not too stiff either. It just gives a really great ride. So if you can't tell, I am super excited to take this thing out on the trail. And once again, I wanna thank all of you for being so awesome and putting the bug in Kona's ear about the channel and letting them know how much you wanted to see this bike demoed here. That's the reason it's here, it's because of you. And I am so appreciative of that. It is so beautiful. What I didn't expect was how sparkly and metallic and metal flake the paint job is. And it really pops, especially in the sun. A lot of times you can buy a $2,000 bike that's like good, but not great components. These components, the only reason you'll swap them out is if you have a very strong preference for something different or you wanna lighten it up. This isn't gonna be a light bike, it wasn't meant to be, but all of these components should be able to hold up to any rider and not give you any issues. You should be able to ride this for three years without putting any significant money into it. It should be a very solid bike. The only thing I don't love is the 69 420 written on it. I think they're trying a little too hard to be cool with that. That's not something that relates to bikes. It has nothing to do with geometry numbers. It's just trying to be cool and hardcore. And I think it's a little bit juvenile, but that's me. I know a lot of people are into that sort of thing, but yeah, that was just kind of like, oh really? That, that just kind of cheapens the experience. This bike was not designed to be light, but it's still interesting to see what the weight's gonna be. So let's go throw it on the scale. I'm gonna take a guess. That's not too, I'm gonna guess 32 pounds, let's see. So I just weighed it and this bike comes in at 32.9 pounds with pedals. And that's not too surprising. We've got a Marzocchi Bomber Z1, heavy fork, but great fork for the price. We've got Race Face Affect R cranks, heavy cranks, but great cranks for the price. We've got heavy tires on here. We've got the Affect R, parts which everything will feel great and be strong it's just a little bit heavier 
But the only real way to save weight on this thing is to go lighter tires, which defeats the purpose of it, a lighter fork, which is gonna cost a lot of money, and maybe carbon bars and a lighter stem. There's really not a whole lot you can do to make this lighter. So 32.9 sounds like a lot. We're gonna see if it feels like a lot when you pedal it. I'm not surprised it came in at that because this is a burly, aggressive, rowdy hardtail. It's built strong to take abuse and to hit big jumps and big drops and hit really hard trails and just take it over and over and over. This isn't meant to just be a light little dainty little bike that you zip around on flowy trails. This thing is meant to attack the trails. They kept the chain stay short, exactly what I want. They ran a slack head angle, exactly what I want. It's got a low bottom bracket, exactly what I want. It's got a threaded bottom bracket. It's got sliding dropouts. I can run this single speed if I wanted to. Somebody's thought about frame compliance by flattening this out. Hopefully we have a little bit of compliance in those seat stays. Okay, so I'm curious if this will fit a 27.5 by 3.0. I really doubt it because it's not marketed at that at all and all they talk about is 29, but I'm curious. And I got one here to test. Let's see. Some people buy bikes based on the best components they can get for their budget. Holy cow, this is fitting. Like you could buy a Salsa Timberjack that for 2000 bucks, you get an XT derailleur, you still get SLX hubs and stuff. And so some people will go for that because to them, they get better specs, except they're not looking at forks. Like this Z1 bomber fork is way better than the sector that comes on the $2,000 XT build Timberjack. So you really have to be careful when that's all you do to compare bikes. And I've got a whole video about that on the five ways that people shop for bikes wrong and how to do it the right way. Holy cow, this is a 3.0 and it's fitting, it's tight. Wow, okay, let me show you a close up, this is cool. So up top here, plenty of clearance with the 3.0. Down here it is awfully tight right in there we probably have three mil of clearance it's about to rub the, the chain state protector so no it's not designed for plus tires and it's going to lower your bottom bracket but it actually fits i think 2.8 would be close enough that i'd feel comfortable running that you could definitely run 2.6 i don't know why you would 29 seems like the right setup for this but who knows i'm really excited for the upcoming videos that i'm going to experiment with this I've got a lot planned, so stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't subscribed to the channel already so you're notified when my review comes of this bike and so that you can stay connected and keep learning things. I try to include an educational element in every one of my videos and a lot of people have learned a lot about mountain biking through this channel. I hope you have. Thanks for watching. You guys are awesome. If there's another bike you wanna see reviewed that you haven't seen on this channel already, do what you guys did for this. Write an email to that company and say, hey, I don't know if you know about Hardtail Party. He does hardtail only reviews. Here's why I like them and I'd love it if you'd send him one so I could get his take on your bike before I purchase. Anyway, thanks for watching. There's a party in the mountains. It just got a whole lot slacker and you're invited.